Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue the study of international logistics. My name is Felipe. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like. Don't forget to support this channel with donations. Start the notifications. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you very much. Let us start. If you like, add a commentary. You can make a question. A Jirid Book Carrier has cargo handling, cranes and derricks installed on its main deck to load and unload cargo, while gearless Book Carrier depends entirely on shore side facilities for loading and unloading. A better use of capital resource is to have one shore side material handling facility serving the needs of a vessel on important trade routes rather than each vessel having its own infrequently used cargo handling facility. In the other trades, the vessels are usually not equipped with loading and unloading equipment because they perform repetitive back and forth movement between all loading docks and steel mills. In trades where origin and destinations continually change, it is necessary that the vessel be equipped to load or unload. Dry book areas are not a large tanker because tankers need to navigate inside ports or next to dock facilities in order to load or discharge. Dry book carriers must dock next to land and a space to the shore side operator is dragging the dock alongside his loading and unloading facility so that large vessels can moor there. In addition to dragging, the dock wall must be dependent, strengthened and tied back so it does not collapse into the water, because these costs limit the depth of berths. They also limit the size of vessel can be used at these berths. Another limit of the size of dry books vessels are the dimensions of the Panama Canal. Most investors invest one a vessel that is able to trans the channel. Other side, the vessel will foreclose from many hulls. The term Panamax means a vessel that can pass through the channel, and vessels whose size can carry up to about 75,000 tons. In the early 1970s, a book slurry handling technique from iron ore, known as Marco Naflo, was developed and installed on a fleet of vessels. The ore from the mine had water added, and the mixture was agitated until it formed a thick mud substance that could be pumped. A flexible pipeline would lead offshore and the material would be pumped into a vessel that could be moored in deep water after the vessel was loaded. The cargo was settled and most of the water would rise in the top of each hold. It would be decanted off and the vessel would set sail. At the destination port the vessel would moor offshore. At the bottom of each hold, there was a washing machine, agitator like device, and water would be introduced as the agitator was activated. This would form another slurry that could be pumped ashore using a flexible pipeline. A vessel with similar characters was once used for transportation wet wood pulp. A specialized form of dry book carrier used on the Great Lakes for birth domestic and international moves, U.S. Canada is called a laker. Laker are longer and narrower than ocean-going ships and would be unsafe to operate on oceans. Their principal cargoes are ore, coal, grain, and limestone. Some lakers are equipped with self-unloading devices and their shared rates run about 10% higher than lakers that are not similar equipped. Drawing of a combined container row row vessel. Illustration courtesy of CIENGNA Corporation. A combination oil and dry book carriers. A combination carrier means a book vessel that can carry either petroleum or dry cargo. And it was built that was because the original owner investor at the time the vessel was building built was uncertain whether the future markets over the vessel's life would favor dry or liquid book cargo. Such a vessel would have to visit a shipyard 
to be converted from a tanker to a dry book vessel or vice versa. The nickname Combi is given to such vessel types, although the nickname has a wider application to a vessel that either fits two definitions or has cargo carrying capacity, split in some form. A combined row row container ship is shown in figure 4.3. As a containerization becomes popular, row row container ship is shown in figure means a ship that had both racks or carrying containers in conventional holds for traditional stevedor towered break book cargoes. General cargo vessels. The original general cargo carriers were called break book and loaded on a piece by piece basis by stevedores. Palletization speeded up the process of a highly loose freight in the days before containerization and continues today in some of the non containerized trades. Carriers allowed shippers free carriage of the pilots themselves and the weight in the curb of the platform itself because of the efficiency they promoted. Many carriers even offered cheaper discounts on freight and arrive and could be handled on pallets. The need to speed up the process of loading and unloading and to minimize middle time spawn the containerization technology. Containerization the carriage of goods in large intermodal boxes or bags was the logical extension of Palletization, containers vastly increased freight handling capability and greatly reduced either port time. Those special container carrying vessels have emerged and proliferated along with short size structures to move them. The ship themselves have been redesigned to carry containers in cells aboard the ship to be rolled or driven aboard to carry containers lighters. We stop here and then we're going to continue. If you like the video, give it a like, support this channel with donations. Don't forget, start the notifications. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you very much. Until next time, see you.